This week we're at the Las Vegas Auto Ring, which, well, this is the first time the PCC Cup Series has ever been here. And this track, it seems like a uh, short track with an identity crisis. The cars here are going about 200 miles per hour into the turns. Now, there was an incident during the qualifier that had uh, the uh, ire of many of the officials. Their good friend, uh, Stringfellow Vincent, decided to cause about an eight-car pileup or so while on probation. So we haven't gotten word from the officials yet about what's going to happen to him, but I'd suspect it's not going to be good. Earning his first pole award of the season is Lenny Jacobs in the 52 for Paloma Autosport. This is his first ever pole, and he gets a decent start. However, on the outside, Preston Bell in the 75, he'll take the lead with help from Sam Brown in the 71 there, and Preston Bell will lead the field through turns 1 and 2. However, on the bottom, Lenny Jacobs is battling back with help from his teammate Brian Gallagher there in the 12, and he'll retake the lead entering turn 3 and into turn 4. However, Brian Gallagher will pass him on the second lap. Look behind there, you see Barry Juveno in the 65, racing with uh, Jack Daniels. He is not happy this entire season. He wants his championship, so he will take the lead back there on uh, entering lap three. Now back in the field here, Cameron Taylor, he slaps the wall in the 77. Cars haven't been handling too well. There was a rain shower a couple days ago, so uh, grip is kind of gone from the track. And uh, there's smoke up there from, I believe that's Dan Foray in the in the Lycoya. Uh, his car is not handling well right now. As you see, he creates a jam up on the outside. Not sure if uh, he'll be able to get that car uh, handling better or not. Here's David Hetzel, he's running back in the pack. The 17 car, he's been way off the pace all week, along with a 92 of Gaspar de Souza, who had to start in the back as well, from a penalty from Road Atlanta. Chris Benson in the 55, hometown hero. He takes the lead on lap 7 as the crowd goes wild. Sponsored by uh, Stratosphere, it's a local uh, casino here in Las Vegas. He is, he is digging really hard. One of the surprise qualifiers this week was Scott Wallen in the 0-2. This car was horrendously underfunded last year, and I believe it still is. They cobbled together pieces from what appears to be a Dodge, a Gaznier, a Corsa, and a Tutino, and uh, somehow he got into the show. Another surprise qualifier this week was uh, Chester Benson there in the 30. He salvaged an old PCC lights car and uh, decided to slap some decals from that onto this car, and he brought it here and uh, put solidly in the show. He's running in the, the top 15 right now. Here's Whitney Fuller, and uh, this car is way back in the pack. The only part-time car so far this year to make a race, and uh, it's in 35th place. Not a good showing for uh, that car. Clara Kindall takes the lead from Chris Benson, and Clockwork Team Lexus is looking very strong yet again. Uh, we've got Clara Sear in second place. Clara Kindall might be a dark horse for the championship. Some contact between Damon Jones and Gavri Apollo racing for the all-important position of 36th. Damon Jones, it's your debut, and you probably shouldn't be roughing up people before lap 20. However, uh, you did make the show, so good job for you. Barry Juveno, he is running in fourth place, and after, uh, after he DNPQ'd for Cleveland and lost the championship, he's hungry to get his championship back, and he's proving that right now. He's running in fourth place. Seventh place, AJ Murphy, Ohio short track racer, was picked up by MRD Motorsports last year around the time of Decatur, and he did an impressive showing there. However, at Road Atlanta, he was uh, back in the pack, but now he's doing well. Good job for him, and hopefully we'll see some more of this. Chester Benson, running in ninth place. Somehow he sneaked his way into the top ten of that underpowered car. He's running in campaign right now. Top 30, and children get free candy at his hauler. What, what a noble cause for that team, and he is performing way above the bar. Co some contact between Preston Bell and uh, Edward Carroll stacked up in the pack there, uh, right behind Daniel Lecklider making his debut. And there's another car in that pack, John Jefferson in the 23. Way underfunded. That team is sponsored only by uh, Cleveland area companies, and they brought a Meridian here, and they're doing awesome. Here is David Hetzel going a lap down. This is only lap uh, 26, so there's the handling must be going on that car. There's something majorly wrong, as you see. He's way off the pace. Two laps later, Gaspar de Souza goes a lap down, and he's another car that's been way off the pace all week. 
He set the 38th fastest lap time in qualifying. However, he had to start in the back due to a penalty from Road Atlanta where he took out his own teammate, Joe Craig, who is, uh, for some reason, actually doing pretty well in this race. Here's Daniel Lecklater running in uh, 12th place, and John Jefferson, underfunded car, running right behind him in 13th. Excellent run for both of these drivers, and uh, they're showing that the little guys can perform well. Nicholas Cordova's last week's winner is uh, not doing well at all. He is struggling mightily running back with Gabriel Apollo back in, uh, I believe that's 39th place. Here is Ben Worthington running in 9th place, and he was getting wrecked left and right. I think he uh, decided to propose to that one wall by the bridge at Road Atlanta at one point because he was in it so much, but now he's running in the top 10. Great run for him. The lead pack has dropped to about seven cars now. As you see here, Chris Benson, hometown hero, he will pass he will pass Lenny Jacobs for the lead, entering the front stretch. Now, David Hetzel, he's going another lap down. It's only lap 39, so he must be going even slower than before. As you see, the leaders just go blasting by him there on the inside. And uh, the next lap. Here's Gaspar de Souza going two laps down. As you see, Barry Juveno takes advantage of Clara Kindall slowing up for the lapped car, and she loses the lead to Barry Juveno there. 65 car takes lead, and Gaspar de Souza for some reason decides to put himself into the wall, letting the traffic go by. I've never seen that before by a lapped car. Uh, very courteous of him, but uh, not too good for the car. Barry Juveno is leading here. And as I said before, he's desperate to get a win. He's desperate to lead the championship. He's just desperate in general, and he's he's showing that right now. He's in the lead, and he's just trying to pull away from Clara Kindall. Here's Joe Craig, and uh, he's doing a lot better than his teammate. He's running in eighth place with uh, Louis Ballard right behind him in ninth. Uh, not really sure what kind of setup they put on uh, D'Souza's car this week. We have some more contact in the back between Robert Nelson and uh, Dan Foray there for the all-important position of 39th. Not really sure what's going on there, but Robert Nelson's a pretty aggressive driver, as I've noticed. Uh, David Hetzel goes a third lap down here on lap 49, and I'm surprised that the officials haven't black flagged him yet. You see here he's... Uh, just way off the pace. Now, Gabriella Apollo just went a lap down, too, but that's just her first lap that she went down. Chris Benson has pulled out to a big lead using some of the lap cars. There's Robert Nelson. He just put a lap down. In front of him is Damon Jones there and Nicholas Corradovos. Sad to see Corradovos getting ready to go a lap down. He was uh, really looking forward to defending his win last week, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. His short track skills haven't been the best, I should say, though. Here is his teammate, Grigory Novakovsky, and he's got, uh, I guess, better better skills at ovals than his teammate because he's running near the top 15. He just fell back to 17th, but uh, he's having a pretty good run so far. Preston Bell, he gets a shot from Edward Carroll there, and he fights to save the car. Edward Carroll said uh, over his radio that he wasn't going to take any crap from that 75 car, and as you saw earlier, 75 got into him earlier. Ian Elias is the first car to dive onto pit road of the leaders. A couple back markers had made an earlier stop, and that is what brings out caution one. Guess it was just a simple lack of communication. John Bracci exiting the pits, Robert Nelson entering, and Bracci gets into Nelson and spins him up the track. However, that's not all. Nelson, he spins up the track here, and wait for it, wait for it. There's Dave Hetzel. He slams into the back of him. Richard Dean MacGyver gets collected as well as Novakovsky, and... Gavin DeGray, Cameron Taylor slams into Robert Nelson and gets him a bit sideways, and he slides uh, across the track. Novakovsky was just an innocent victim. He had nowhere to go. Same thing with Gavin DeGray. You see there, um, MacGyver, Novakovsky, Nelson would all fall out of the race. Nelson tried to get back to the pits, missing his left rear fender. However, his car would stall on the track, and he'd have to get towed back. Clara Kendall would continue to lead on the restart on lap 63 and the two cars in front of her Barton Sandy and Edward Carroll are currently on the tail end of the lead lap they're trying to get back onto the lead lap because a caution was flown during green flag pit cycles Chris Benson suffers a uh, vibration on the car and he brings that car to the pits tough break for him he was having a great run up in the top 10 next lap AJ Murphy has the same problem although this time it's a puncture 
Not really sure what he picked that fr up from. It might have been debris. However, we'll have a caution on lap 63. Cautions do breed cautions here. Gavriel Apollo gets hooked into the wall by Preston Bell, and all hell ensues. There's Flint, Stoneman, Barton, Sandy's involved. A couple other cars will get a piece of this. There's uh, Fazi Dianenzo there as well, getting a piece of it. Not really sure what that was about, but we'll watch here from Fazi Dianenzo. He's got a great view of this. It just looks like uh, Apollo slid up the track into Bell and uh, collected a couple other cars. He and Enzo doesn't get too much damage, and he gets hit by Corridovos there, but he'd continue on. Clara Kindall pit under caution, so Clara Sear leads the field to the green flag on lap 70. Edward Carroll behind her is still a lap down. He wasn't able to get by Clara Kindall by the time that the caution flew. Here is Joe Craig running in second place. He managed to work his way up here by lap 72, and he's putting together a hell of a run for that team. However, his uh, teammate's not doing as well. Trouble for Clara Kindall as she reports a suspension issue and pulls that car into the pits. Tough break for her, and that's her, the end of her day. However, we're not done wrecking here. Caution 3 on lap 74. Drivers find out quickly that 5 wide doesn't work here. Chris Benson gets pushed up the track into Fazi Dianenzo. AJ Murphy gets spun off. Dan Frey collected. John Bracci. Dan Lechleiter as well. A couple other cars are spinning up the track. You see there's a puff of smoke coming from somebody. AJ Murphy gets shunted by Chris Winter. It does an excellent job of saving that car. However, he slides up the track, and there's Josh Marshall. Both cars go head on into the wall, and here comes Ike Durbin. Ike Durbin's collected Preston Bell, Nicholas Cordovos, and a couple other cars are getting damage in this one. And uh, not really sure what that was about, just five wide does not work at this racetrack. Restart would come on lap 80 with the sixth car of Ben Worthington leading. This car has been impressive all day. He's been up in the top 10. And Ben Worthington, the rookie, last year's PCC Lights champion, finally getting to show his medal here and uh, lead some laps. Dan Ferre's car, that car was smoking earlier. And uh, you got to admire their determination. They ripped the entire quarter panel off that car and sent them back out. And uh, they might be the slowest car on the track, but they're still, they're still trying to salvage a good points run. Here's Pete Maverick, and he's working his way up into the top five. Another rookie that's been impressive. He scored a top 10 at Road Atlanta for this team and uh, got a new paint job for this race. Here's Kelly Blackwater, and she was hired just a couple weeks before Road Atlanta, and now she's finally getting a chance to show her worth in this series. And uh, they're doing a promotion with this car, Top 10 Kids Eat Free with Golden Corral, and she just passed John Jefferson for 10th place. So if she keeps this up, Kids Eat Free. Seven laps after the restart, Dan Ferre goes another lap down. He's having a miserable day here, but he's just trying to get some points out of this deal. He's running in about, I think, 25th at this point, so no matter if he finishes or not, he's still going to get a top 25. Another rookie that's having a good run is Craig Yonser. He's running in 13th place right now, right behind his teammate Cody Deak in the 31. And he was kind of a wrecking ball at Road Atlanta, but here he's proving that wrong by uh, having a really clean race. Louis Ballard takes the lead from his teammate Claire Ossier in the 11, and Ballard, I said last week that Ballard was going to be in this car all season. He is not. He is stepping out of the car next week, so James Kirkpatrick and his JK Racing team can compete. They're sharing owner points, and that's, that's, that's a good cause for this team. I think that they're going to do pretty well, that 41 team, with JK Racing. Here's John Jefferson in the 23, and I, I've, I can't state enough that he is just stepping above the game. He's running in ninth place right now and just going above and beyond what this car can do. And you see Chester Benson right in front of him in eighth place. And uh, here's Joe Craig. He took the lead two laps ago from uh, Louis Ballard and he just opened up a big lead. He's He dominated the qualifying race and now he's, he's opening up a big lead here in the closing stages of the race. Ian Elias in the 32. He had a great run out of nowhere last week at Road Atlanta and how he's looking to get another top five. He's uh, really showing that he's improved his form this year and I wouldn't be surprised if he got a win. Here's a hairy situation for, for Ben Worthington as he tries to get around Gaspar Souza in the left car Cameron Taylor. He's running in sixth place right now way behind everybody else. You see him there. He's playing Dan Ferre a lap down but still a good run for the rookie. I had mentioned earlier that this 35 car and Kelly Blackwater had a deal where if they finished in the top 10, kids would eat free. She's running in 11th right now, right behind John Jefferson. Now both these cars are putting forth an excellent effort, but 
I don't know if she has the horsepower to pass that 23. That 23 has been stepping above and beyond this week. Joe Craig looking for his first win, and there's Dan Foray. No, he just got passed for the lead by Louis Ballard, and I'm not going to be surprised if that 2019 protests this, because that was a ridiculous block, handing the lead and possibly the win to Louis Ballard. Joe Craig must be heartbroken right now because he just lost his chance to win his first ever PCC Cup race. Here is Louis Ballard leading with two to go in front of his teammate Claire Ossier, who I'm sure isn't going to pass him. Now, Louis Ballard in the OK Soda car running a special completely black scheme here will win. He will not return to this car next week, but he will win at Las Vegas Auto Ring. As you may have seen in the background, Barry Juveno got by Claire Ossier at the last second to snag second. Joe Craig, what a heartbreak for him. He managed to recover to fourth place, but still not a win. Ian Elias, two races in the season, two top fives for him. Great job for that team. They're looking really strong this year. Ben Worthington manages sixth place. He was in a league of his own there at the end. Chester Benson, seventh place. Kids get free candy at his hauler after the race. Good job for him, and that is just that is a noble cause for him, uh, giving candy to all the children at the racetrack. Lenny Jacobs, eighth place, hung on. John Jefferson, underfunded car, got by Pete Maverick on the last lap and uh, finished in ninth place. Pete Maverick rounds out the top ten, two top tens for that rookie as well. Good job for him.